So we're going to go ahead now and do the same for the other four emails that we have. Just mostly change the subject and a little bit in the uh, email message. Now this is a thank you email and the only significant difference is that there's no call to action here. We just want to thank them for registering as well as this reminder email just to make sure that they don't forget about it. Now that we have our emails and landing pages done, we can build our form. Now this is a rather simple form. We're going to have a contact field for email address, which we're going to use as the uh, unique identifier for our contact. And once again, we're going to use a field merge here to draw out the email address that we have in our database. And then we're going to add in a custom field. We're going to call it RSVP. And this is the field that's going to help us determine whether this form was submitted as a RSVP form or a declined form. Now, two things to note here is that we want to give this field a proper HTML name as well as give this form a proper HTML name. These two values are going to be very important when it comes time to build our blind form submit link. So we want to give it something that we can easily identify. After that, we go to our processing steps and add in any steps that we want to happen when this form gets submitted. So in our case, we want to send the submitter an email and in the condition that when the form field of RSVP is accepted, we're going to send them a thank you email. As well, we're going to add them to the RSVP list. And we're going to redirect them to the RSVP landing page. Do the same for decline. And now we're done with the assets. Now that our form is finished, we can start building that blind form submit link. And by default, that's what a blind form submit link will look like. Now the text in red are the values that we have to change. So first things first, site ID. The way to obtain site ID is to go back out to our form, view form HTML, and look for this part. This is our site ID. So copy that down and put that in here. Next, our form name, as well as the tracked field, which is RSVP. And because we're going to have a accepted and a decline form, we're going to build two blind form submit links with different static values as such. So site ID, form name, site ID, and our field and its value. Now we want to go back to our email, select the buttons, go to tools on the left side, enable as hyperlink, select web page, and paste the accepted link in the URL. Do the same for decline, except use the decline link. And then do the same for the other four emails. And then do the same for the other emails that 
has the call to action. Once those forms are, once we're finished with the blind form submit links, we can test it and make sure it works. So let's send this email to ourselves. As you can see here, our share lists are currently empty. So looking at this email, if we click on RSVP, we'll get redirected to our landing page here. And then we're gonna get redirected back to the company homepage. And there's our thank you email. As you can see now, we are on the RSVP share list. The decline list is still empty, so to test it, we're going to go back to our email. We get directed to the landing page, going back to the home page, and now we're on the decline list. So now that we have the emails working, we can go back to our campaign and select all of the appropriate assets. When that's finished, save our campaign, and now the campaign is ready to be activated. Now keep in mind here, this kind of email campaign structure can also be used for something more complex, such as a nurture campaign, which we're going to cover in our next session. So that's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough and hopefully we'll see you next time.